Good morning, and welcome to Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church. Wherever you are right now, we're so glad that you took time to join us in worship this morning as we remind everyone that the church is not a building, that we gather in spirit and in truth to worship together as the body of Christ in this time of collective sacrifice as we social distance for the meekest and most vulnerable among us. Welcome. Thank you for joining us in worship. I want to bring to your attention a couple of activities and opportunities for ministry and worship and connection with our church family in this time. One is our Tuesday check-in. Be sure and come back to this Facebook page on Tuesdays and you can see a check-in from one of the members or families of our congregation as we want to remind you in this time that we are all in this together. Here in our 175th year of existence as a church ministry. We also want to bring to your attention our food tote ministry. We have a tote right outside our sanctuary doors uh, for those in most need at this time. This tote is available all through the week for you to bring donations. We're partnering with our friends at Parkside Lutheran. And uh, it's an opportunity every day that it will be checked and the food will get in the hands of those most in need. So please contribute as you can. Next Sunday, we invite you for an exciting Sunday under the direction of our music director, Teresa Quinn. Um, we will be having a hymn sing Sunday. So if you'll join us, just like you have this morning live, you will have an opportunity to pick your favorite hymn out of our Presbyterian hymn book or our new Presbyterian hymn book entitled Glory to God. Or perhaps you have a favorite that's not in either hymn book, but you want to test our music director's knowledge and see if we can play that for you. We're willing to try whatever you request. So be and send that in live, or you can always contact us during the week and let us know one that you would love to hear from us. That'll be a hymn sing Sunday this Sunday, May the 31st. So we hope you'll be a part of uh, that Sunday. The next Sunday, June the 7th, is Children's Sunday. Our Christian Education Director, Heather Jones, will be uh, uh, directing our children as they lead us in worship, uh, doing different parts of the service, reminding us um, of how much we value our children and children's ministry here at Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church. Also, if you have a student, grades 6 through 12, we have a youth Google Hangout uh, at a new time this week, Fridays at 4 p.m., so if you will, make sure that your student, if they are in those age groups, joins us for a time of connection, games, and talking about our faith as a youth ministry. So we hope you will join us at that time. And now, if there are no further announcements, we will come together in worship, removing our distracted minds and asking God to breathe in us and through us as we worship the Lord together in spirit in truth.
using the virtual bulletin in your comments section, let us call ourselves to worship. God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all your children may be drawn into your bountiful dwelling. Amen. where we've fallen short of the glory of God, where we must be dependent on the grace, mercy, and compassion found in Christ. Looking at your virtual bulletin, will you read along with me the prayer of confession? Living and gracious God, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have brought us out to a spacious place where we are called to live as those redeemed. We often squander our opportunities to bear witness to your love and fail to obey your commandments. Forgive us. Empower us by your spirit to keep your commandments that we may show forth your love with gentle word and reverent deed to all your people. Friends, hear this good news. Though we come as sinful beings, God offers us forgiveness through Christ. In the waters of baptism, we are reminded that we are claimed, we are cleansed, we are renewed, and we are redeemed. And we are reminded that God loved us before we could love God, and that by the grace of God, our sins are forgiven. Amen. At this time, if you are age 3 to 5th grade, you are quite familiar with this part of the service. You would go and spend time with our Christian Education Director, Miss Heather Jones, who would have art and craft and song and opportunities for you to express your faith. We look forward to those times in the future, and Miss Heather will be contacting you during the week to give you those opportunities. But right now, in the service, if you are in that age group, come a little closer to the screen. Because this is your time. We want you to know here at Lafayette Avenue that you matter. We're so glad that you're joining us in worship this morning. Sometimes during this time, 
We might feel different things. We sent you a package this week, especially to remind you that we're with you in this time and that, as we've said to all our uh, all ages of our church, we're in this together. One of those sheets that I gave you this week that if you'd like, you could color and fill out and send back to me, talked about when we feel scared. It said, how are you feeling today? And it said, today I'm feeling scared. One of the things you can do in that time is talk it out with a trusted adult about a time maybe when they were scared or fearful. Another thing you can do, you see in your worksheet, is make a plan. Chances are, if you're scared of something today, you might be scared of it another day too. You should know that many of the things you're scared of is something that other folks are too. Lots of people are scared of the dark, or bugs, or big animals, or going to the doctor. So many things that can scare us, even the future right now. Sit down with a trusted adult and talk those things out. Some things that can help could be a nightlight that you turn on before dinner so your room will be all lit up when it's time to go to bed. New things, changes, those can be scary too. We've experienced a lot of changes in the past couple of months. And one thing you can do when you feel those feelings of fear or feeling scared is you can pray. So let's pray together right now about that. Dear God, I am so scared. Help me to not feel alone and reach out for help from my family and my friends. Amen. We gave you five of these worksheets, so take an opportunity and look at one every day. It deals with a different emotion when you feel curious, angry, happy, sad. Today we talked about when we feel scared. I hope you took that with you and you'll think about something that was said in a movie not long ago we went to together, Frozen 2. Sometimes when we don't know what to do, we can remember what the character Anna said to us in the movie. She said, when we don't know what to do, sometimes the best thing we can do is do the next right thing. What's the next right thing? for you. Thank you for spending this time with me. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, speak to us through your word that we would truly be attentive to what you're saying to the church today, that we would lay down our hearts and lives and agendas and let you breathe into us your message of hope and peace and compassion and assurance of your presence. And we ask all these things in your awesome name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning with verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Our second reading this morning is Acts chapter 1, beginning with verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. 
But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John, and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God this morning. It might be a frustration or it might be a relief to see the scriptures confirm today that the times are not in our hands. Apparently, the ins and outs of the Lord's timing, the coming and going of the Lord, are on a need-to-know basis. And apparently, as disciples and followers of Jesus, we don't need to know. In our scripture text today, we are called to be witnesses to Jesus, disciples of the way, but we don't need to know the when, apparently. The ascension of Jesus here on this Ascension Sunday had to be a confusing time for the disciples. All this glorious resurrection springing up around us simply for Jesus to go away? Was there feelings of abandonment? Perhaps at that time there were feelings of hopelessness. Yet this was the timing for a new thing. The descending of the Holy Spirit alive and active in and among us. Look closely in the text for the immediate action after the ascension of Jesus. They gathered together and devoted themselves to prayer. Women and men coming together, seeking God, making themselves available for the Holy Spirit to come alive in them, to light up their call and witness and daily motivations. Questions and confusion at this time did not lead them away from their call. It led them into a devotion time together. I recently connected with a seminary mentor of mine in a Bible study that they're now offering online during the week. It is particularly focused on a certain book. This study has been an encouragement to me to hear different experiences and perspectives on Scripture. The Holy Spirit speaking through us in community. I would lift up this book for reading. It is called The Talking Book, African Americans and the Bible by Alan Callahan. Let us look at this time to make our community wide and let God speak to us in a variety of ways, letting God speak to us through this time even of questions. At this time, we can look for online communities that we can connect to, perhaps in greater numbers than we could in the past. Even in this time of being physically apart, God is still speaking. Perhaps this is a confusing time for you in the crisis we face together. Where is God in all this? What's next? The very beginning of the church provides us perhaps with some hope today. Because at its core, 
as a guide for all of us who wish to follow Jesus, as a lesson to all of us who call ourselves Christians or believers or followers of the way, we see at the very beginning of the church women and men in devotion together. Prayer was their first move. Questions moved them to their devotion. Perhaps questions right now could move us to our devotion time. I can't think of devotion time without thinking of growing up in the Dowling household. It was always the first part of our day, devotion time together. My father usually got up around five or six in the morning for his prayer time, prayer and singing that we would hear from our bedrooms. But there was always a certain hymn that signaled it was time for the Dowling children to arise and for our family devotion time. We gathered around different Bible translations and different hymn books from the various churches where my dad had ministered or we had visited. My dad, at least at at that time, had a collection of at least 10 different hymn books from 10 different congregations. They all had a different favorite hymn book. And my dad would pick various selections because he always found something he liked or something that meant something special to him out of that particular hymn. So we would gather around and prayer and song and reading scripture together. The beauty of prayer and singing as we seek God. There is no bad reason to pray. There is no bad time to pray. If you like, I can suggest devotional guides at this time, of course. But sometimes, a simple way to start your devotion time and your prayer time is to start with something you know well. You could start with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. You could pause there and think of the many ways that God is our parent, loving us so tenderly, like a mother. In scripture it says, on eagles' wings he carries us. To think of the way God cares for us in that way. What does it really mean to be a child of God? And then you could say, who art in heaven. Reminding of us that the heavens and the earth all belong to God, this world is the creation that we have the opportunity and privilege to live in and serve in, that God is our creator. Hallowed be thy name. That word hallowed, another translation to mean sacred. We think about how sacred the name of God is and that we, when we call ourselves Christians, are actually bearing the name of God. How are we keeping the name of God sacred by the way we live our lives? To bear that name Christian means something. It's a responsibility to be a follower of Jesus. And that's just the first sentence of the Lord's Prayer. Perhaps this is a great time in your life to renew your devotion time with God. To make it a daily habit. To look for opportunities to pray and sing and however you find that your prayer life and spiritual life works best for you because it is different for everyone. And that's the beauty of the Holy Spirit. There's not one right way, but the Holy Spirit moves through our gifts and our abilities and calls us to different ministries and even our spiritual lives look different. This is a time in our history where we lose control. And maybe that's the Holy Spirit's cue right now to enter. Just as the ascension of Jesus brought about the Holy Spirit for one moment, that abandonment and the hopelessness that perhaps came with that time, but then the Holy Spirit breathed life into the disciples. And perhaps we're called to ask the Holy Spirit to breathe into us the very words of Jesus during the start of the church. You will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We don't have to know the answers to be witnesses to Jesus. 
We are living out our faith witness right now in this moment. Don't let the unknown lead you to fear or anger. It's devotion time. How can your daily practice lead you to inner peace? How can you better reconnect with Jesus in this time? How can your actions bear witness to what the church is really all about in this time? This truly is devotion time, believers. We as a church are so much more than just a physical building. We can be resilient and caring of all people, especially thoughtful of the most vulnerable in mission and in connection with one another. So I challenge you this morning and in the coming weeks, let the Holy Spirit connect us. Even now through the screen, in our giving, in our prayers, in our mission, in our notes to one another, in all the creative ways that we find to serve and the opportunity to be served. To let this hard time drive us to greater devotion to Jesus, not less. It was such a blessing this past week to be a part of karaoke with our children, led by Miss Heather. She's opened it up to all adults, and so there will be another karaoke event in the next coming weeks, so be sure and look out for that. We would love for you to join us. So many great ways that we can connect and bring a smile. Because we are witnesses. Right now, maybe more than ever, we are witnesses, and the world is watching let us show our devotion is so much more than being in a building. Amen. At this time, we invite you to affirm our faith together using the confession of the church written over three decades ago. It is called a brief statement of faith. It can be found in your virtual bulletin or page 36 in our new PCUSA hymnal. Christian, what do you believe? Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcast, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we deserve God's condemnation. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. The same spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. Amen. We invite you at this time for a time of prayer together as a community. In our prayer, we will have a time of silence, allowing you to put prayer requests in the comments section below. We want to remember all our prayer requests, spoken and unspoken, and especially our homebound right now, Katie Wolf, Virginia Krull, and so many others in our surrounding community that might especially be feeling the pain of loneliness with the lack of visitors at this time. Please be in prayer for them as we look to minister to them by bringing packages and cards and gifts, although we cannot physically visit at this time. As we have upcoming Memorial Day, we want to remember all those who have fallen in the line of duty. We want to pray for peace. Peace in our world and peace in the hearts of all those who have experienced loss and pain through war and through service. And with a spirit of gratitude to all those who serve. Let us now, at this time, pray together. Lord Jesus, 
Thank you for the opportunity we have to come to you with all our requests and needs, thanksgiving, joys, and sorrows, and brokenness, knowing that we really can cast all our care on you, all our fears and anxiety and worries for the future we truly can bring. We can bring the full complexity of ourselves because you have not asked God for perfection, but that we would, that we would bring all of ourselves And in your compassion and love and by the moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we would be called to be witnesses at this time. So enable us this week to be answers to prayers. And now we bring our many requests to you as a community of faith. We bring these many requests to you, both spoken and unspoken, as we pray the prayer the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we invite you to worship with us in the way that you give. This is our time for tithes and offerings. There are multiple ways at this time that you can give. There's an app that will be provided right now in the comments section that you could give to us in that way. You can always go to our website, elmwithjesus.org and attach to PayPal that way. Or always, you can mail uh, to our church at 875 Elmwood Avenue. However you choose to give today, thank you for contributing to this ministry as we look to serve the Lord together in this especially difficult time. So we ask you to give from your hearts as we worship together.
Amen. Let us pray. Lord, it is with gratitude that we receive these gifts, tithes, and offerings this morning. Make us responsible as stewards, God, to use these funds for the building up of your kingdom, the spreading of your light and your love in this community and far, far beyond. And it's in your awesome name we pray. Amen. So this week, look for how you could be a witness to Jesus, not because you have all the answers, but because we have been called and enlivened by the Holy Spirit to show God's love and peace and compassion in this world. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.